Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama bad ayu ala habati fillah One of the great uh, fitness or trials that we face today Especially between Ahl Sunnah Is because you find many individuals They're on the same minhaj Meaning their methodology for da'wah is the same. They call to Kitabullah. They call to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they call to the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. That's what they accept. And they accept the Dalil, the evidence from those sources and from the Ijma. And they have the same ulama. Essentially. However, as will happen and has happened throughout time, it will continue to happen, is that there will be differences between brothers and sisters. And that they will differ sometimes over issues, even though they have the same madhab, the same minhaj in understanding Islam, that they will have differences about how to practice some of those things. So the minhaj is there. But yet when it comes to making a hukum or a ruling on maybe a particular individual, for example, this is one of the fitness that we face in this time and age, is determining when specific individuals are no longer from the sunnah, uh, following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we say they're no longer from Ahl Sunnah, or they're no longer Salafi, or they're no longer what have you. This fitna comes, ayyullah habbati fillah, and will continue to be, but this should not be a source of discord and disharmony between Ahl Sunnah. Because we should not be forcing our view upon others. And I'll give you an example of myself with regards to the statements I've made about particular individuals. I would never make ilzam force others to take my view. I brought Dalil from Kitabillah wa Sunnah al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the aqwal of the Salaf or, or, or the ulama of this time to support my view about a particular individual and his mistakes. But I would not say to one of my brothers who may listen to him, you're off the Sunnah if you listen to him. Rather, I would advise him I would be patient with him or her and try to illustrate with knowledge and with wisdom and with good preaching why I hold this view. Not that I want them to be like me or want them to follow my view, but instead because I really believe that and that person is a harm or has some statements that are harmful that I feel the individual or others need to be aware of. But when it comes to forcing other people, that I don't, we don't have the, the uh, authority to do so. Likewise, Ahabatifillah, this issue arises countless times. I can think of so many individuals who've been declared innovators because they didn't declare someone else to be an innovator. Basically, the, some of the brothers hold the Qaeda. They say that men lam al mubtadi'a They say whoever does not uh, consider an innovator to be an innovator, then he is an innovator. Okay, we can look at this qaida and we can understand the haq of this qaida if what is meant that you're talking about someone who there's no question they're an innovator. No question that this person has deviated from the religion of Islam clearly without doubt. Just like the Prophet ﷺ spoke about rebelling against the leader that you should not, uh, as far as making takfir and rebelling against the leader, that unless there's kufr, uh, bawaha, there's clear kufr, clear disbelief from a law that you have dalil, uh, barhan. That it's clear, there's no doubt. The ulama are, uh, have agreeance 
about that, that is kufr, and, and make a, a hukum, some ulama or what have you, make a hukum on that particular leader or that person, and uh, declare them to be a disbeliever. So, the point being this, not that everyone has to have agreeance, this is not my point, before you can make a hukum. Abedin, I'm not saying that, so don't say that I'm saying that. My point is this, is that when we, perhaps, for example, if I made a mistake in speaking about a particular individual, Nu'man, I spoke about Nu'man Ali Khan, and I spoke about Imran Hussein, those are some people individually, and, and, and Dr. Yasser Qadi, I spoke about them individually, and I've said statements about them, and I tried to do it with gentleness, uh, and with manners, and with evidence, most importantly, with evidence. I, none, none of those individuals can say, I did not bring kitab or sunnah, kitab or sunnah, to authenticate what I was saying, without any strange ta'wil. No, no strange ta'wil, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. So, being just, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. However, the fact that someone may disagree with me does not necessitate me forcing my view or attacking them for having another view because I could have made a mistake. This is the point. No one is free from mistakes. And no one's statement, and this is what we said in the last sitting about uh, related to Menhaj and related to uh, speaking about individuals and so forth, is that no one is ma'asum except the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as far as, far as uh, following individuals and mashayikh and ulama. Everyone, as Imam Malik said, uh, can be refuted or can their call can be accepted except the inhabitant of that qabr and then he pointed to the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here's some beautiful, a beautiful statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala will read the statement translate it and that that will be sufficient uh, his kalam the kalam of a great uh, imam Qala ibn Qayyum ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala وَنَّ الْعَالَمَ قَدْ يُزِلُّ وَلَا بُدْ إِذْ لَيْسَ بِمَعْسُونَ فَلَا يُجُوزْ قُبُولُ كُلِّ مَا يُقُولُهُ وَيُنَزَّلُ قَوْلُهُ مُنَزِّلَةَ قَوْلِ الْمَعْسُونَ فَهَذَا الَّذِي ذَمَّهُ كُلُّ عَالَمٍ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ وَحَرَّمُوهُ وَذِمُّوا أَهْلَهُ وَهُوَ أَصْلُ الْبَلَاءِ الْمُقَلِّدِينَ وَفِئْنَتِهِمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ يُقَلِّدُونَ الْعَالَمَ فِيمَا زَلَّ فِيهِ وَفِيمَا لَمْ يُزِلَّ فِيهِ وَلَيْسَ لَهُمْ تمييز تمييز بين ذلك فياخذون الدين بخطا ولا بد فيحلون ما حرم الله ويحرمون ما احل الله ويشرعون ما لم يشرع ولا بد لهم من ذلك اذ كانت الاسمه منتف منتفية عما قلدوه والخطأ وخطأ واقع منه ولا بد. ابن القيم رحمه الله تعالى said a beautiful and profound statement which is sufficient for us. قال this great imam رحمة الله عليه he said an an alim might make a mistake. And this is absolutely for sure, meaning it will happen. Every alam, every person is going to make a mistake. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata ina tawabun. The Prophet ﷺ said, every, all the children of Adam, they make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes are those who repent. So, uh, an, an alam might make a mistake. And this is absolutely uh, a necessity, meaning that it will happen. Because he is not masum, he's not perfect. And it is not permissible to accept everything he says and to take his statement, 
to the level of a statement of perfection that that there's no mistakes that that his statement khalas sheikh so, so meaning sheikh so and so said this khalas that's the end of the emir he doesn't need dalil he doesn't know everyone needs dalil for what they say if you speak about an individual and, and we're specifically talking about any hukum but let's just stick with this because this is related to our subject if you speak about an individual if sheikh so and so who i love dearly or sheikh so and so who i love dearly speaks about a particular individual they still have to come with evidence. They still have to have dalil. They're not above the hukum shara because this is a hukum shari. This is an Islamic ruling when you speak about an individual. That means you're speaking and making a judgment based on kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the Shaykh said, Shaykh al-Islam, rahmatullahi he said, it is not permissible to accept everything that he says and take his statement, raise his statement to the level of someone uh, 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 of who has perfect statements, and then then this is what all the ulama consider dispraiseworthy. All the ulama on the earth consider this to be dispraiseworthy or unpraiseworthy, and they make it haram to do so. And they uh, speak ill of those who do this, meaning those who blind follow in every matter, you know, and believe that their sheikh or believe whoever is free from mistakes. And this is the main foundation of fitna or trials from those people who are blind followers and from their fitna and from their, the fitna that they, they have. For verily, they follow uh, a scholar, an alam, in his mistakes and in what he is correct with. And they do not have the tools, and we've said this many times as well, they do not have the tools to distinguish between those two, between mistakes and between that which is uh, uh, correct. So they take their religion Uh, mistakenly and this is absolutely a necessity that they're going to fall into this error and then they make uh, what is lawful and uh, what is unlawful by a law lawful and they make haram what a law has made halal and they legislate what is not legislated and this is a necessity that they'll fall into this. So, this uh, perfection is negated or is, is something that the person they blindly follow does not possess. So then in this case, a mistake uh, will, will happen. And that's for sure. That's the statement of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim, letting us know. And that's why, ayyul ahabati fillah, to make this a little more clear for us, our situation, that when, for example, a brother speaks about another brother, he says, so-and-so is a mubtadi'ah, then maybe he goes to one of the mashayikh, and he, he gives the shaykh, maybe he gives an accurate picture, maybe he doesn't. This is another issue. He might give an accurate pi picture, and he may not give an accurate picture. Then the sheikh makes a hukum based upon what he heard. So and so is a mubtadi'a. He's misguided. Don't listen to him or what have you. Then this spreads around the world, of course, of the internet and this and that and the other. And you see, we already know the results from these kind of cases happening. So, ahabati fillah, it's upon us to be truthful. It's upon us to be just. It's upon us to operate be dalil from kitab wa sunnah and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. And likewise, to know that every hukum, even if it came from one of the great ulama, and this is not to take away from the ulama, so don't make a statement that I'm saying not to take from the ulama. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And whoever says this about me, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them their just punishment in this life if they lie about me for stretching and lying about these things because we love the ulama.
and we need the ulama, and we follow the ulama in accordance with kitab wa sunnah and understanding the salaf of this ummah. Ahabati fillah, as I was saying, a situation might occur and there may be a mistake make, made because there's a qa'ida sharia also that we're going to mention real quick that because I want this to be beneficial that we take principles from this. Go back and memorize these principles so you know it's going to help you practice your religion. I'm trying to share little bits that I learned. Alhamdulillah, and that's what learning is. We're supposed to build one another. And you share that, and they build, and we build, and we build, and you'll be better than me, and the next one might even be better than you. And maybe you'll go seek knowledge and be better. And your children, pass the knowledge on bi'idnillah ta'ala. Ahabitifillah, the ulama say, this is a qa'idah fiqiyah. Al-hukum ala shay fur'in ala tasawwari. Which means, the ruling, to make a ruling on something, a part of making that ruling or judgment is that you have an accurate picture. That's beautiful. That's a qaida shari. If only we would practice that. So what that means is if you have a brother, for example, if myself, let's just use myself as an example. If I go to a sheikh and I say so-and-so in my community, who the sheikh has, doesn't know because I'm from America, Seattle, Washington. And I say, so-and-so in Seattle is like this sheikh, and I give some characteristics. And say if I lied, wa'iyad billah, and I lie about this individual. And then the sheikh makes a hukum based upon what I said, the lie. Or, what have you, it could be the other way too. Al-hukum ala shaykh farin ala tasawrihi. That when the sheikh makes this judgment, a part of that judgment is affirming and knowing and having an accurate picture. That means he has to have, to make an accurate hukum, shari, he needs to have an accurate picture of what's going on. Of what's going on in that society or what's going on with that individual if you're talking about an individual. And this is what sometimes we have nuts with some of our brothers and sisters. And I'm going to give you a beautiful example of where it was, uh, it made me happy and it's recorded on my YouTube page. I asked my sheikh, one of our mashayikh, Sheikh uh, Saeed Halil Hafizullah uh, Ta'ala in Hayl. And I asked him and I made a, a, an accurate description of what Yasir Qadi said. I just took some of what Yasir Qadi said in context and I gave the Sheikh uh, the picture so the Sheikh could give us advice and that, that advice would have more weight than if I had spoke against something that I knew was wrong. The Sheikh made a hukum. What did the Sheikh say though that was so beautiful? And I love it, and I encourage you to go back and listen to the maqda or the, the, uh, the, the sound bite or what have you that's recorded about Yasir Qadi from Sheikh Saeed. The beauty of that is the Sheikh said, well, the first thing he said to me when I described about, I said, I gave Yasir a good picture. I said he's a, a very studious individual, you know, graduated from Jamal Islamiya. He knows the Dawah because he was you know, active and sitting with ulama in Saudi and blah, 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 blah. But he said this and this and this, which goes against usul, ahl sunnah. Usul, ahl sunnah, fi mukhalafat. I gave the sheikh a picture. What did the sheikh say the first thing? And this shows us, this is how we need, and we need our ulama to be as well, is he said, if what you say is true, that was the first thing he said, and that was beautiful. The sheikh has known me now for... 11 years now, I've known the Sheikh. I was with him in 2000 is when I met him. He knows me and he considers me trustworthy and he knows I'm not a person of fitna bi'idnillah. And what did he say to me? He said, if what you say is correct, then such and such and such and such. If, this, if what you say is correct about this individual, then this, this and this. But he didn't just jump in and say, oh, that individual is this, this, this. But he... he made to, to act it because he knows that he is now involved in this and doesn't want to be held accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being unjust. So a be just and be accurate in your descriptions and be kind and gentle to one another. And you know ta'awan ala bir wa taqwa work together. In, 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 in righteousness 
and in piety, uh, God consciousness, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cooperating in khair. And be patient. And do not cooperate in sinfulness and enmity. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika wa ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu astaghfiruka liman a'lamu.